This is Physics 1020 and 1090. Um, this is a lecture for Monday, March 30th. We are in Chapter 27 on Quantum Physics. Here in this second video, we're going to continue our discussion about black body radiation. So remember black body radiation. That was the amount of energy given off by a hot object, and we looked at the intensity given off as a function of the wavelength. So we're looking across the electromagnetic spectrum. And black body radiation had been discussed in described in classical theory. So around the time that Planck began working on this, there was a classical theory of uh, electro of black body radiation. It was described by the Rayleigh genes formula. And in this formula said the intensity is equal to eight pi times Boltzmann's constant. Boltzmann's constant is a parameter from thermodynamics that you may remember from your first semester of physics. K times the absolute temperature divided by wavelength to the fourth power. So if it's divided by wavelength to the fourth, that means a very long wavelengths, large wavelengths, which are out in the infrared and into the radio part of the spectrum, the intensity is very small. But as the wavelength gets small, it's in the denominator, the intensity becomes very big. So in the visible and especially in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum, have a very large radiation. Now, the problem is that this formula does not match what's seen experimentally, like we talked about in the last video. Out here at long wavelengths, actually the classical theory and the experiment do match. So they agree deep into the infrared at long wavelengths. But as you go shorter infrared, near infrared, into the visible and the ultraviolet part of the spectrum, there's this gross deviation of the two. And it's known as the ultraviolet catastrophe. Rayleigh Jean's formula failed miserably at the shorter wavelengths. Planck wanted to figure out why. So in trying to figure out, he basically derived his own formula for the intensity of black body radiation. And this is Planck's formula here. And it's a bit complicated, so let's go through it. The intensity as a function of the wavelength is eight pi times h. Well, h is Planck's constant. That's the constant that he introduced. Times c, that's the speed of light, divided by wavelength to the fifth power. And then there's this factor one over, this is exponential of hc over lambda kt time minus one. So we got to focus here on this exponential factor. Hc over lambda kt, well, that's a ratio of two energies. First, there's hc over lambda. That's the energy of a photon, h times the frequency. So the energy of the photon divided by kt, that's a thermal energy. An object at temperature, absolute temperature t, all the atoms have energies on the order of Boltzmann's constant, k times t. So it's a ratio of photon energy to thermal energy appears in this exponential. This equation contains Planck's constant, so it is a quantum mechanical equation. It contains C, the speed of light, so it also has relevance to relativity. But work, when you have an equation like this, it's rather complicated and it's a little hard to understand. What I want to do is I want to stress that equations are not just something you put numbers into and get out other numbers. Equations tell an entire physical story. And sometimes to extract that story, you have to look at limiting cases of an equation. And that's what I want to do with this rather complicated equation that describes Max Planck's uh, radiation law. So let's look at Max Planck's equation in a couple limits. <clears throat> First, I want to look at the case where the photon energy, hc over lambda, is a lot less than the energy of an uh, atom. So you have all these atoms bouncing around with thermal energy of approximately kT, and they can just give up a little. One atom can give up just a little bit of its energy and produce a photon with a much smaller energy. Uh, it has a photon energy, hc over lambda. So there's plenty of energy around to produce these tiny little photons. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Planck's law, and here's Planck's law again, just as what I wrote on the previous page. And we're going to use this approximation. And notice the hc over lambda kt is what appears in this exponential. So you're going to get xe to the hc over lambda real small compared to kt, which is downstairs, e to the real small number. Well, we have, have need an approximation for e to 
some number x, e to the x, thinking of just a mathematical function, e to the x is approximately, it's with small values of x, is approximately 1 plus x. How to see that? Well, here's a plot of e to the x as a function of x. And as it starts out fairly uh, small, and then it grows and grows dramatically at large x. Here, the dashed line is a plot of 1 plus x. It just grows linearly with x. Notice that at small values of x, these two lines overlap. That is, e to the x is approximately equal to 1 plus x for small values of x. Well, small values of hc over lambda kt is going to get, mean we can replace our exponential by 1 plus what we were taking the exponent in, what was in the exponent, hc over lambda kt. So that's what the exponential becomes. Otherwise, these two expressions are the same, Planck's law. You have a 1, and then you have a minus 1. So those are going to cancel. So you're going to end up with an hc over lambda kt downstairs. We'll take the lambda kt, which is in the denominator of the denominator, and move it up. So you get 8 pi hc over lambda the fifth out front times lambda kt over hc in this approximation. This is interesting. The h's cancel. There goes quantum mechanics. The c's cancel. There goes relativity. And all you have left is 8 pi kt over lambda to the fourth. That is exactly the Rayleigh genes result. So in this limit, where this is a small photon energies, that's the long wavelength limit. That's the limit way out here at long wavelengths. At long wavelengths, we knew that the experiments agreed with the Rayleigh genes formula, the classical formula, and indeed Planck's expression agrees with the Rayleigh genes formula. No quantum mechanics involved. So we, that's comforting to know that at least Planck's new expression gives you the same thing as the classical theory in the situation where the classical theory actually got things right. What about when classical theory gets things wrong? We have to take the other limit. Now we're going to take the hc over lambda, the photon energy, and say it's real big compared to kt. Think of it this way. You have a whole bunch of elect atoms moving around in this hot object. And in order to produce even one photon of energy at this wavelength, they would have to all get together and, and, and cooperate and give up all their energy just to have enough energy to produce one photon. That's the limit of hc over lambda, photon energy much larger than kt. So now we have blank Planck's formula. I just copied it over, Planck's formula. And now we have this as e to the hc over lambda kt is a big number. So you have e to a big number. Well, e to a big number is going to be gigantic. And it's so big that you can ignore the minus 1, and you just get 1 over e to a great big number, which is the same as having in the numerator e to the minus that great big number. But e to the minus, say, infinity, e to the minus 100, try calculating it. It's really small. This quantity goes to 0, even though as you're talking about small wavelengths, small wavelengths, you'd think this quantity out here in front would get really big, but this exponentials go to zero so much faster that the entire quantity for what small wavelengths, that is large photon energies, goes to zero. And that's exactly what you needed. Planck's expression goes back down to zero here at the really short wavelengths, which are correspond to high photon energies. So Planck's equation gives you a correct values at long wavelengths, but causes this thing to fall off at the short wavelengths, exactly what you need to understand the experimental data. So Planck said, I have a formula now that describes the experimental data. In fact, when he announced this formula, people immediately went out and tested it and found that it's a very good description of the experimental data throughout the entire wavelength region. Now Planck was faced with a conundrum. He was a theoretical physicist. He had to figure out how he could derive this formula. He found it sort of by hook, hook and crook, by accident. He put things, tried different things, and found this formula that worked. How could he derive it from first principles? Because it was a fundamental formula now in physics. Nobody could understand where it came from. But he found that he could derive it. I can't go through that entire derivation. It's rather a little complicated for this class. But he found he could derive it if he assumed that light couldn't be given off in just any amount. It could only be given off in little quanta, quanta or photons of energy hc over lambda, or in other words, hf. 
So he found that he could derive this expression if he just restricted light to becoming little packets of energy. So in other words, for a short wavelengths, you, the KT, the, 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 the thermal energies, you can't even uh, produce one photon. You'd have to have a whole bunch of them work together and that's a very unlikely event. So that's really this, this quantized energy of the photons means that you can't produce photons of ultraviolet and, and x-rays because there's just not enough energy around and it's too unlikely that all these atoms can work together collaboratively to make even one photon of those very high energies. And he was able to take his formula, has only one free parameter for him, and that was H, and compare it to experimental data and come up with a value for H, 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 34 joules second. That's what we now know as Planck's constant. So in 1900, Planck announced his formula and soon afterwards he was able to come up with this derivation of the formula and that really introduced the idea of quantum mechanics. It was the first equation to ever contain Planck's constant and it introduced this idea of the photons come in packets of energy. However, Planck, Max Planck was a conservative scientist. He interpreted this his results in sort of the most conservative way possible. He thought there was just something about an object itself and how the atoms interacted that limited them to be able to produce energy of photons in this way. In the next video, we're going to see how Albert Einstein came along five years later and really introduced the idea that, that no, this is actually a property of light itself. Light itself comes in these elemental quanta of energy and it's not just an accident of how a black body happens to emit energy. It's fundamental to the light itself.